Drinking from the spring of living water every Monday during the Bible study of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry is such an enriching experience that affords you an unforgettable encounter with God and His Word. The vibrant general superintendent of the ministry, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, is a renowned minister and teacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, having traveled worldwide for the propagation of the gospel. Each contact with his ministration gives you the privilege of joining our first year and expectant congregation to receive the bread of life, which satisfies the body, soul, and spirit through anointed messages filled with unction of the Holy Ghost. This message will transform you and help to deepen your walk with God and your service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sit back as we present to you the unchanging Word of God through His minister, whose entire life revolves around the preaching of the gospel of salvation and purity of life in preparation for life here and hereafter. Let's welcome Pastor W. F. Kumui. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Almighty God, we do thank you and we bless your name. One that you have kept us alive. And two, that you give us the interest and the desire to know you more. And you brought us here tonight. And all those brothers and sisters in all the various locations in this country and beyond. In the whole of the continent of Africa and beyond. You brought us together to study your word. Oh Lord, we pray there will be strength and power, dynamic, spiritual energy infused, injected into everyone. Study tonight in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, that your power will keep us strong and firm. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you drive weakness and timidity and, coward and cowardliness away from us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray the might of your spirit and the power of your spirit coming in the light and with the revelation of your word, you give us tonight in Jesus' name. As we take the spiritual food, make us strong. As we see this light of the scripture, help us to see the path we ought to walk through in Jesus' name. And Lord, when that hour of testing, trial will come, oh Lord, we pray like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be able to stand our ground in Jesus' name. We'll not turn back for the enemy. We'll not look back to the land of perdition. We're moving on and marching forward in the strength of the Lord and nothing will stop our onward journey in Jesus' name. Strengthen us in the world tonight. Enlighten us with the revelation tonight that Lord, we too, will be able to declare the might and the glory and the majesty of the Most High God. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You can see that. We're coming to Daniel chapter 3. And in Daniel chapter 3, we're looking at the revelation and the recognition of the true God. If you remember what we studied last, you'll see that Nebuchadnezzar challenged Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because these three faithful, loyal, uncompromising children of God, they refused to worship his idol. And then he became so furious, so angry, and he then said something. We're looking at Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Now, if ye be ready, at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbot, satry, dulcima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, now you ask this question, but if you will not worship, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning furry furnace. And who is that God? And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? That was the time the battle line was drawn. He challenged the Almighty God. 
because he didn't know God. He only knew his own idols and his own gods. And he was surprised that some people could have the audacity and the boldness, the effrontery, to refuse to worship his idols. That's why he asked the question in verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? That made him angry that they could ever stand true to their own God and then stand firm in the recognition of the power and the majesty and the highness and the greatness of their God. And he said, can it be true? Am I hearing myself right? That you will not worship my gods and you will not worship and bow down and bend to the image which I have set up. Then he said, I'm going to give you another chance. If you now, when you hear that Babylonian music, worldly music, if you will fall down, worship, that will be all right. I'll forgive the past and overlook your foolishness of the past. But if you remain firm, adamant, and rigid, uncompromising, that you are not going to worship my God, I'm asking you now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, think about this very well, because that's the furnace of fire right there. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? I thank God for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I say thank God for those three faithful people. They said, we are not careful to answer you, king, in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, he shall serve the Lord. I say, he shall serve the Lord. And when that hour of trial, temptation, pressure, persecution, when it comes, the Lord will see you through. And so they said, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the born in furry furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. I'm telling you that that did not convince Nebuchadnezzar at all. That made him more angry. That's the reason why he told them to heat the furnace seven times hotter. And then they threw them in. The people that threw in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what happened to them? They were burnt up by the flame of the fire that came. Look at verse 21. Then those men were bound in their coats, their hosing, and their hearts, and their other garments. And were cast into the midst of the burning furry furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment, verse 22, was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But then these three, the faithful ones, these three, the uncompromising believers, these three, the righteous followers of God. These three, the people that refused to worship idols and they gave their allegiance and commitments and absolute surrender unto the true and living God in heaven. These three, here is what we're told about them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 23. They fell down bound into the midst of the bony very furnace. Then the candles of the king was astonished and rose up in haste. And spake and said unto the counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True king, he said, He answered and said, Lo, behold, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart, and the form of the fourth is like who? The son of God. That's what brought the confession that he made eventually. In the latter part of verse 29, there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. There is no other God that can deliver after this sort. The events of this great chapter in Daniel end with the revelation of God. The beginning was bitter. The end was better. It's always like that. When you are trusting the Lord, it might appear that the beginning is sour, but the end is sweet. It might appear that the beginning is very dangerous, but 
the end is delightful, delightsome. As you look at the beginning, you'll see these three Hebrew children, they were going to suffer. They were going to die because of their faith. But they didn't die. They lived. You will not die. You will live. And even though it was bitter at the beginning, you'll see at the very end, everything turned around. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, there is no God that can deliver. After they saw like the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Nebuchadnezzar was a great man, a mighty man, a powerful man, a worldly wise man. But he did not know the true God. Doesn't that confirm what the scripture says, that the world by wisdom knew not God? And then Job tells us in chapter 11, verses 7 and 8, Can thou find, can thou by searching find out God? Can thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What can thou do? Without a divine revelation of God, it is impossible to know the Lord. In fact, Job said, I go forward, but it's not there. I'm backward, and I cannot perceive him. On, on the left hand, where he does work, I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. Then he said, oh, that I knew where I might find him. That's how Nebuchadnezzar was groping in the dark. He didn't know God. He couldn't find God until he threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fairy furnace. And then the fourth, like the Son of God, came and was walking with them, fellowshipping with them. Man groves in darkness, trying to find God. Without the revelation of himself, we cannot enter into the noble life of a glorious purpose that makes us worthy of a divine birthright. That is, we cannot know God and then have the experience and the touch and the transformation of knowing God until He reveals Himself unto us. Most men, including the wise and the mighty, have made unto themselves God. After the similitude of a man, an idol is a man made God. How vain is the quest! How vain is the passion of an aided man in trying to know and to find God. The result as a whole is a lamentable failure, a melancholy failure. Nebuchadnezzar in his ignorance asked, And who is that God? Only after divine revelation could he say, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, of Meshach, and of Abednego, the path of reasoning through human senses, does not lead to the discovery or the knowledge of the true God. As you reason, as you try to calculate, as you try to go through logic by yourself, you will not be able to find out God to the ultimate, the way you should know God. Only the highway cast off by the king himself leads to that knowledge. That highway is called revelation. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 1 verse 18, He said, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. And then He said in Matthew, He said, Neither knoweth any man the Father, the God in heaven, the God of heaven, save except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal Him. With the revelation received through him, whose form is like the Son of God, Nebuchadnezzar had no more doubt about God. He knew that now God exists. He was first of all saying, Who is that God? But then, when he saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and then he saw the fall, like the Son of God walking with them in the fire, he said, Now I know that there is God. Look at verse 26. Then the Cadnesar came near to the mouth of the pony furry ponies and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of who? Of the most high God, come forth and come hither. Now he knew about God and he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego the servants of the most high God. God. And then he tells us in verse 29, Therefore I make a decree 
that every people, nation, and language will speak anything amiss against the gods of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be caught in pieces, and their houses shall be shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. What has he discovered? Number one, he has discovered the existence of God. Number two, he has discovered the greatness of God. Number three, he has discovered the power of God. Number four, he has known now the majesty of God. Number five, he has now detected and found out the dominion of God. Number six, he has found out the exaltation of God. And number seven, the uniqueness of God. No other God like this God. This is unique. This is high. It's the most high. It's the greatest of all gods. There is no comparison, no rival, no parallel with this God. How did he find out? How did he know that this God indeed actually exists and has greatness and power and majesty and dominion? And that this God is exalted above all, no rival, very unique indeed. The revelation was irresistible. And the logic was indisputable. But how did he get to that? How did he finally get to the fact that this God is great, holy, high, and majestic? Number one, by the pres preservation of the true worshippers in the fire. He had seen Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as the worship God. And by the very preservation of those people in the fire, he knew there must be God. Number two, by the triumph of faith over the fire. He saw how triumphant their faith was. And it wasn't a faith in a dead God, in a dead idol, in a metal God. It was a faith in the God of heaven. Number three, what convinced him was the appearance of the Son of God. They threw three into the fire. And now we have the fourth person, like the appearance of the Son of God. He knew there must be God in heaven that sent his Son to fellowship with these three people. That's how he knew there is God. Number four is by the silent communication of incarnation. When we say incarnation, that means Jesus Christ becoming like man and coming to this world. And there was a silent communication of the incarnation of Christ right there. And then he knew this must be the Son of God. And if the Son of God is there, God is there above. And then number five is by heaven's prompt response to us challenging events. Something was taking place here and on earth. And he had mentioned God. And he had said, who is that God? And as far as the earth is from heaven, the God of heaven had heard the challenge and responded promptly to that challenge. That's why he said, now I know there is God. Number six, by the verification of unprecedented miracle. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, they examined them, they verified. And they look at their clothes, they look at their hair, they look at every part of them, and nothing was taught by the fire. And he said, now I know, now I know, this God of heaven, there is no God like him. Number seven, by the unarguable conviction of the still small voice. Something was telling him in his heart, with everything you see, with everything you behold, and with the evidence before you, can you doubt now of the existence and the glory and the power and the majesty of God? He said, there is no doubt anymore. The truth of the revelation of the eternal omnipotent God was turned on the heart of the king and of all his princes. That's why he came to declare that there is this great God. There are three things we learn here. We learn, number one, the impotent gods of the heathen. Because he himself confessed, there is no other God like this. And then those people that picked up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them into the fire, those people all died. Their gods could not protect them or preserve them. That makes us to learn, like Nebuchadnezzar lies that day, the impotent gods of the heathen. Number two, the incomparable God in